Hello students, welcome to another lecture that is on the chapter number 5 that is EV auxiliaries, right? The electric vehicle auxiliaries. In the previous lecture, we saw about the energy management system, which are the inputs and which are the outputs of the energy management systems. Then we have started about the battery characteristics and the chargers. In the case of the battery characteristics, we have seen about the discharging characteristics of the battery in the previous lecture. In this lecture, we will start with the charging characteristics of the battery. Then we will see the types of the chargers that we can use for the batteries according to the type of the battery that we are using. And then we will further go about the different auxiliary components of our electric vehicle. So let's start this lecture with our battery charging characteristics. In this graph, you can see the charging characteristics of the four batteries that we have discussed in the previous lecture as well. That is lead acid, lithium ion, nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydride battery. In the case of the charging battery, you can see that the graph is for the voltage versus the capacity or the input capacity of the battery. The capacity here is given in the percentage, right, from 0 to 100 capacity that we can see. Also the capacity of the battery can be more than 100% in the case of the batteries but in the case of the actual battery or the actual discharging capacity it will be reduced such as if you know that the actual rated voltage of our battery is 2.1 volt per cell which means the rated voltage of our lead acid battery that we use in the normal car is 12.6 volts in actual but uh, in theory, in actual when we are using the battery, we say that it is the battery of the 12 volts because when it starts the discharging, it gives the value at the 12 volts. So this is basic difference between the actual and theoretical value of the rated capacity of the battery. Also you can see that the graph for the voltage on the left side and the right side is different. For the left side, the cell voltage for the lead acid and the two nickel batteries is shown which is the lower values of the voltage. On the right side you can see the cell voltage for the lithium ion batteries which is almost more than double voltage of the battery and this is simply gives us the uh, indication that lithium ion gives us the higher voltage of the battery and it gives us the better value of the capacity for the battery characteristics. Right. See the charging characteristics in which first you can see for the nickel metal hydride battery that the value of the voltage almost stays the constant throughout the charging of the battery. Almost it stays the constant and it is being charged at the 0.1 current value or 0.1 C value that is the representation of the discharge in the battery. Here in the case representation of the charge of the current during the battery. So it will be charged at the point 0.1 value of the rated current of the battery. Second you can see the nickel cadmium battery in that after the battery is charged up, uh, at more than 80% the voltage increases which means the voltage gets higher and after the charging works as you can see in the graph here the value of the current is 0.2 current. Third one is the lead acid battery. In the case of the lead acid battery, you can see that cow like a snake and which S shape is created. After the 80 or 90 percent charging of the battery, the voltage increases. And the interesting graph is for the lithium ion battery in which you can see that sudden jump in the uh, voltage of the battery. After some time it gets constant and after a uh, charging of around 70 to 80 percent, the voltage stays constant. So the slow charging will be obtained after the battery has charged. So almost all the batteries gives us the indication that at the start the battery will be charged at the higher current. After that, some charging of the battery or when the cell has reached the rated voltage, the voltage should be kept constant after that. So after that the battery will be charged at very slow rate and at lower current. This is simply how the charging should work 
for the safety of the battery and to avoid the overcharging of the battery. So this is the basic charging characteristics. Now there are two basic types of the battery chargers. One is the conductive charger and second one is the inductive charger. Right. According to the name, conductive charger directly gets connected with our battery management system and our charger is directly coupled with our system. In the case of the inductive charger, they are not directly coupled but the magnetic field is generated in between those two components. So in that charging system, that is in the inductive charging, two metals are never in contact with each other. So because of that, this type of charger can be used in any condition, right? In any atmospheric condition, rainy season, snowy season, right? Summer season, whenever we are using that charging system, it provides an enhanced safety for the charging of the vehicle. So inductive charger is a safer way to charge the vehicle, but the cost of the charging is higher compared to the conductive charging. Let's see a basic schematic graph for both the chargers. First, this is the graph for the conductive charging. In the conductive charging, the charger is shown here is an off-board charger. Right. There are also two types of charger. One is an onboard charger and second one is an off-board charger. The onboard charger is given inside the vehicle. Right. But because of the onboarding of the charging vehicle, the weight of that charging applies on the vehicle. Also, you cannot provide a fast charging system with the help of the onboard charger. In the case of the off-board charger, the charging is at separate place from our vehicle and it does not have any limitations of the weight. So even the fast charging can be applied in the case of the off-board charging as well. So in this figure you are seeing a conductive charging with an off-board charger. That off-board charger is separately connected with our battery management system. Here you can see in between with the locking lever these two things has been coupled. At the above part, the plug is connected with the socket which has been applied in our battery management system. Until and unless the locking lever is at the lock position, the current will not flow from the charger to our electronic system or the battery system. After we apply the locking lever, the current will flow from our charger to the battery management system. Until then, the current will not flow. So this is simply how the conductive charging work in which the plug is connected with the socket and the current will flow in the battery which will be maintained and which will be controlled by the help of our battery management system. How much current and when, how much current or how much voltage or how much amount of the current is supplied through the charger to avoid the overcharging of the battery will be controlled with the help of the battery management system. You can see the readings which are being shown with the arrows that is battery voltage, battery current, battery temperature, battery SOC that is state of charge and the log off. All the things are connected bidirectionally in the case of the station controller which is at the offboard place and at the battery management system. These two are interconnected and from that sensing values the amount of the current will be controlled for the charging of our battery. This is the example of the inductive charging case. Again, this is an off-board charging, right? So at the charging station, you can see the coupler is there and at the electric vehicle side, you can see the inlet of our charging is given. That coupler and inlet will never be in directly contact, but it will be coupled with the system. After it, the coupling is completed, the magnetic field will be generated in between them and because of that magnetic field, the current will flow into our electric vehicle and after that, our battery will get charged with this system. So simply how this inductive charging work is that the two metals will never be in contact with each other. Right? This is the basic thing in the case of the inductive charging. The magnetic field will supply the current and because of that uh, non-contact charging, the safety is applied. It can be used in any season in the vehicle, in any condition. It will give us the safety and it will not 
uh, overcharge the vehicle or it will not give us any type of the short circuiting problems in case of the charging. But as always, the cost of this charging or this charger is at the higher end and because of the higher cost, this type of charging is generally not preferred over the conductive charging. The conductive charging is the most simple type of the charging and it gives us the better operation or the easier and cheaper operation compared to the inductive charging. Because of this advantage, we are using the conductive charging in place of the inductive charging for our electric vehicles. So this is how the battery characteristics and the charging works in the case of the vehicle. There are also three basic type of the charging that is constant current charging, constant voltage charging and constant current and voltage charging. So depending on the different batteries, the charging or the method of the charging will be selected by the help of the battery management systems and that system will follow our vehicle such as in case of the lithium ion battery still the research is going on but right now what we are using for the lithium ion battery is that at starting the charging current will be higher after the one of the cell has reached the rated voltage of our battery the charging current gets the lower and after the lowered condition, the slow charging is continued until the complete charging is achieved. So this is simply how the charging work and the method of the charging will depend on the type of battery that we are using. Right. In this lecture, we have seen about the charging methods of the vehicle. In the next lecture, we will further see about the different auxiliary systems. Until then, thank you so much.